Salutations Nigger Rookies, welcome back to another video, and today we are playing this horror game that I saw Markiplier play years ago, so I barely remember what happened. Anyway, so welcome to the uncle who works for Nintendo. This is um, a horror game about an uncle who works for Nintendo, I think. I don't fucking know, let's just get into it. You are 11 years old, what is your best friend's name? Never Andrew. Ashley, Brandon, Dave, Jessica, Megan, Nicole, Michael, Ryan. Um. I do have a friend named Ryan, so we'll go with that. Your best friend Ryan has invited you to his sleepover at his house for the weekend. You've been friends since first grade, so asking your mom is basically only for... Wait, what? Formality. Sorry, my bad. You never converted this, but you suspect, suspect the babysitter may charge extra when there are two kids. You sometimes feel like staying somewhere else is the only way you can help out. Oh, so this kid's nice. So their family's like poor or something. Whoa. Alright, hold up. Just give me a second, guys. Is there a way to like turn down, turn up the volume? Apparently not. Alright. I'll just put in creepy music for the background for you guys. So you're welcome. On Friday night, you're home for only a few hours. Long enough to pack, get in a fight with your younger sister, pack some more, and watch some TV. At 6 sharp, you're standing at the, on the sidewalk outside Ryan's house. While your mom idles in her car nearby. She leans out of the window to you. You behave yourself, okay? She says, as always. I'll be at work, but if anything happens, you call me. Uh, I'll go yes, Mom. Yeah. So it's like one of those types of games. Okay. So it's basically like um, Tiny Bunny. Um, I'll pick you up tomorrow at 3, she says, again, as usual. But then she pauses, looking up at the sky, which has been overcast throughout the day. If you play outside, she adds, be careful. It's probably going to rain. Kiss Mom goodbye. After you part, your mom drives down the street, disappearing around the corner. You turn back to Ryan's house. The lights inside are glowing warmly. You can see Ryan waving at you from his bedroom on the second floor. He heads inside. Oh, there's the volume. It's 6 a.m. Ryan's mom meets you just inside. Hello, she says. Dinner will be ready in just a few minutes, but you can drop off. Uh, you can drop stuff off in the den. You and Ryan are camping out there tonight. I'll put cool, cause like, when I'm at my friend's house and like I'm talking with their mom, I'm like, cool, thanks. Leave me alone. I'm just kidding. You drop your sleeping. Oh right, right. You drop your sleeping in overnight bags in the corner of the den. Then pause to take a look around. Behind the couch, a grandfather clock is ticking softly through a set of patio doors on the far side of the room. You can see the sky is just as gray as it was when your mom left. Framed pictures, though, line the walls over the dark fireplace, hangs a monstrous pair of antlers from a buck that Ryan's dad shot years ago. And of course, there's a big screen TV. Yeah, like right here, right beside me. Sometimes it makes you uncomfortable how much nicer Ryan's house is than yours. That's kind of... That's not nice. Oh yeah, guys. Dark Wolf is completely filmed. It's being edited now, so... It'll be coming out very... Very soon. <laughs> anyway. You drop your sleeping and overnight bags in the corner of the den. To pass up your room. Yeah, behind. yeah, yeah, we heard it. Ryan entered the room while you weren't playing, paying attention, and he now stands in the doorway, smiling expectantly. Are you ready for dinner? He asks. Yeah, I love dinner. Dinner passes quickly. Tonight's meal is spaghetti and meatballs, one of Ryan's favorite meals, as his mother points out while piling, um, uh, helping on your plate. Ryan's father cr cracks a beer and... Valley interrogates you about how much trouble you and Ryan are getting into at school. Dessert is 
heaping bowls of ice cream, drizzle, and chocolate sauce. You can't even finish yours. The grandfather clock in the den chimes. Hmm. I don't like... I'm not a big fan of ice cream, not gonna lie, but hold up. Wait. That wasn't beer at all. That's a glass of lemonade. Why would you even think it was beer? Ryan's father doesn't drink alcohol. Quite certain of that fact. Now that you really remembered it. Well, whatever. Why the... Why did it? Alright. Oh, wait, what? It changed it. It changed the dialogue. Ryan sips the lemonade. Oh, my. That's that's pretty weird. Grandfather clock in the den chimes. Okay. So, you go along now, says Ryan's mom, smiling from her side of the table. We'll clean up in here. Let's go get the TV ready, says Ryan. The two of you leave in the dining room and head upstairs. Ryan's room is immense. You stay in the den because the TV is larger there. But there is a um, sizable one here, flush on the wall with the opposite full-size bed. We'll take the 64 down first, says Ryan, heading towards his TV and opening the entertainment center cabinet. Oh, Nintendo 64... It's his um, pregatory, of, of course. He gets to choose what you play first, usually. But as Ryan begins unhooking the cords of the, the 64 from the TV, you catch and say other things as he's in there. All major stuff. An old SNES, a PlayStation, a Dreamcast. Oh, so good. But some other things, too. Things you don't really recognize. A large black box with green highlights. Smaller purple one. A strange white and yellow tower with uh, look like gloves resting on hooks on either side. A compact white one. A, white co a compact white cone. Uh, those look cool. Ryan looks uh, to the clutter in the cabinet. Oh, yeah, he says. They're pretty cool. I can't show them to you, though. They're still a secret. I promise my uncle... Of course, you suddenly remember his uncle. The uncle who works for Nintendo. You guys hear that music in the back, right? In the corner, the grandfather clock is ticking softly through a nearby set of patio doors. You can see it's getting quite dark. Framed pictures line the walls. Ryan is in front of the large TV playing something on the Nintendo 64. Grandfather clock. It's 7 a.m. 7 p.m., sorry. 7 p.m. Frame pictures. You walk around the premiere of the den, inspecting the pictures idly. Most of them are family portraits uh, from the past. Ryan cradled lovingly between his mother and father, or any one of the three of their own. Happy, tidy, look at pictures of Ryan's uncle. You don't, f you don't find any. Not one. The only pictures here are of Ryan and his parents. You don't know why that makes you feel uneasy. Time passes. In the corner of the grandfather clock is ticking so oh yeah, yeah, right, right, I just read it. Uh Let's talk to Ryan. What would you like to talk about? Games, of course. Well, while you and Ryan talk about a game on the TV, it's not you're familiar with, uh, and Ryan explains the elaborate systems in the detail. <laughs> You are in the den. In the corner, the grandfather clock is... Oh, yeah, okay. Watch Ryan play. Ryan decides to play the game alone. It's pretty boring. You're uh, you're at a party having a conversation with a man in a business suit. But for some reason, you can't move the camera up to see you above his mouth. He's saying... He's always smiling. He tells you a story on how people always mistake him for someone else. Did you figure it out, asks Ryan. Once the man in the game has apparently stood up and left the conversation. Figure what out? Ryan laughs, I guess not, he says before putting his choice of game in the Tivin 64. Realize you play... Oh, Mario on the back! Realize you played for quite some time. Clock chimes. That's Mario, that's Mario Kart. I know that game from anywhere. So we go Mario Kart 8 livestream tomorrow. Watch out for that. 
Ryan's mother bustles into the room, holding a large ceramic bowl filled with popcorn under her arm. How are you kids doing, she asks. Good, says Ryan, and his eyes are not moved from the television. I hope you're having fun, says Ryan's mom. Here's some popcorn. With extra butter. She places it on the floor by Ryan. Almost immediately, Ryan is shoving popcorn in his mouth. Meanwhile, his mom's... Wait, hold up. I don't know how he does it. I cannot really touch my controllers while I'm, or my PC while I'm... While I'm eating. I can't. Okay. Meanwhile, his mother smiles at first and then back at you. They sort us in the kitchen if you get thirsty. She says, and some pizza from the other night if you get hungry. Thank you. It's very nice of her. She looks at Ryan and you. Oh, no, no, that's Smash Bros. or her Kirby. Your father's gone to bed. I'll be sure. I'll be there soon, myself. I want you two to keep it, qu keep it quiet, all right? Yes, Mom, Ryan says tiredly. Oh, and before I forget, she adds, your uncle called. He suddenly has some business here in town tomorrow. He's driving early. He'll be here around midnight. Uh-oh. For the first time... Oh, now it's... Yeah, no, I know it's Ocarina of Time. For the first time, Ryan stops playing his games, uh, stops eating popcorn, and turns to look at his mother. Okay, he says. I want you two to welcome him in. He'll be very tired and very hungry, so offer him something to eat before he goes to bed. Okay, Mom. Good night, kids. And with that, she's gone. In the corner, the grandfather clock is ticking softly through a nearby set of PCO doors. You can see. Oh, yeah, yeah no, yeah, we already... Ask about the uncle's visit. So why, uh, so why is your uncle coming? Yeah, I'll, I'll go with your uncle. Stays with you when he visits. Yeah, says Ryan. Uh, I don't know. Not even gonna fucking attempt that. He lives pretty far away, so he just drops by. Is that a little weird? Ryan gives you a look that you don't like very much. How would you know? He asks. You don't even have an uncle. Yeah, I guess so. Drop the conversation in silence. Think about Ryan's uncle. It began with Mew. You didn't believe him at first when Ryan came to school one day and told you he finally caught Mew. Oh yeah, because on the original like, Game Boy, it um it was very difficult to get Mew. So he pulled out his Game Boy and showed you. There it was, Mew, the 151st Pokemon, available only to the players at the promotional event, somehow unlocked on Ryan's game. It's really strong, he says. It KOs um, every enemy in one hit. I don't remember Mew being like that. Ryan demonstrated to cl uh, to cl this claim at recess when you and some other friends linked Game Boys to do battle. You were the first one down. No one else had gotten a single hit on Ryan's Mew. A few days, everyone had quit playing Pokemon at recess. The allure had failed, faded. Oh, that reminds me, like, well, not Bakugan, because Bakugan, like, stayed popular, but still. Like, Pokemon cards. Oh, I, st I still buy them. You asked Ryan how he managed to get it. Oh, my uncle got a job at Nintendo, said Ryan. You were talking, uh, you were walking home together past one of the construction crews. Ryan still lived next door to you at the time. Construction crew. There had been a storm not too long ago. Trees were all over the town. Buildings had collapsed. You were standing uh, at a uh, intersection with Ryan as a truck rum rumbled by, loaded up with ragged tree trunks. What a bad storm. Oh, um, oh yeah. I moved next door to you at the time. Wait, this couldn't have been too long ago. When did Ryan move? There was something nice about being neighbors. Oh. He also got me this new Game Boy, said Ryan, pulling it out of the pocket. I hadn't noticed it earlier, but yes, Ryan had an, a sleek new Game Boy color. Until today, he had one of the old ones. A big gray brick like yours. This one is a special edition, said Ryan. Isn't it cool? You agreed. Well, yeah, no crap. You snap out of your reflections. In the corner, there, uh, let's check that out, let's check. remember your own Mew. You got your own Mew eventually. All this shit's like popping up, like after I find out more about the lore of this. Uh, okay. Another friend had a Game Shark, which you borrowed one day. You spent the entire night unlocking every Pokemon you couldn't obtain in your copy of the game, and, or hadn't yet traded for, including Mew. It didn't, it didn't one hit KO most enemies. It was incredibly weak, and you shamefully cheated the game uh, further to make it strong enough. It looked, it looked different from Ryan's. You asked him why. Oh, it looked different. 
Hold up. Your mule is small, even cute, standing there with its round, cheerful eyes. Well, yeah, that's how mule is. But when Ryan's had uh, wiped out everyone at school, it had a completely different look, compact, snarling, fierce. Hmm. What, he said? That had been here, in the den. Oh, that thing. It had been there a while since anyone talked about Pokemon. Well, my uncle got me a special edition Mew, first of all. He said smirking a little. Sm smirking. I'm sorry. Smirking a little, but not looking away from the PlayStation game he was playing. That's why mine looked different. Second of all, mine can't wa can one-hit KO because it's the real Mew. Hold up. Ryan had moved by then, but how long was after this storm after he got Mew? You can't remember. The real Mew. You ask what he meant by that. And that's just what I said. Ryan replied, You cheated and got a fake Mew, so of course there'd be problems. Glitches and junk. You, you felt your cheeks redden. But not me, Ryan said again. I got the real Mew. And only me. My brother was so jealous. Ryan's brother. What about him? Why does he remembering that comment make you feel uneasy? You step out of your reflection. The clock chimes in the day. It begins raining outside. Jesus. I'm actually starting to get scared. What time is it? What time is it? It's 10. Oh, God. We only have two more hours. Go to the bathroom. Head to the bathroom down the hall from the den. There's a shower, a leaning closet, and a toilet. Let's go to the toilet. You have to go right now. Are you done here? Okay, there's a shower. Shower is pretty clean. Are you done here? Linen closet. What the fuck? Head back to the den. Go to the kitchen. Passing through the empty dining room, you enter the kitchen, which is also deserted right now. Fridge. There's a few things. All the cold pizza. Ooh. Grab your snack. Exit the kitchen. Back to the den. Clock chimes. You're in the den. Oh, God. So why is your uncle coming? Ryan shrugs. Business. But I thought he worked for Nintendo. He does, says Ryan, frowning, but not looking away from the TV screen. He's really important there. Does Nintendo have a lot of business here? Why else would my uncle be coming, Ryan says, as if you asked the dumbest question in the world. Well, that's cool. I finally got to meet him. Well, yeah. Yeah, agrees Ryan. I think you'll like him. What sort of work does your uncle do? Ryan pauses the game and turns toward you, visibly agitated. How should I know? I don't work for them. Right now, he is quite he is not quite yelling, but you think if you keep pre uh, pr pressing the subject, he might. Sure, I believe you about your uncle. Ryan takes a moment to respond, as if he if as if he's not quite sure you heard correct he heard correctly. What? I don't believe your uncle works for Nintendo. You think I, you f you think you finally done it? Ryan stands up, fists clenched at his sides, mouth twisting horribly as he sh uh, struggles to say something. You watch as he steps toward you and clench your teeth and wait. Ryan darts toward you and pushes you back into the hardwood floor, cracking your skull against the carpet. The punch. Uh, Oh, you shove yourself up off the floor and send your fist in Ryan's stomach. For a moment, you're, you're shocked at what you've done as he stands there, gasping in his pajamas. But then you suddenly, but then suddenly, I hate you. You hear something, or I think you hear something, someone shouting, and then you fall in flat on the floor. For a moment, you don't think you can get up. Your body feels heavy. Did he hit you? I hate you, says Ryan. Leave me alone. Finally manages to sit up and turns back to his game. Take a moment to collect yourself. Should I call my mom? Or should I wait? I'll wait. I'll wait. Talk to Ryan. Do you think this storm will be as bad as the last one we had before? Ryan snorts at looking at you. Whatever, he says. Baby, you fall silent. He punched you. Dumb fucking kid. 
Do you think that I don't think the sound of the wind you I don't like the sound of that wind. You remember the storm we had that tore down all the trees? I had snowing something looking at you. Whatever he said, baby, you fall asleep. Oh my god. You try to strike up a conversation, but Ryan is too involved in the game and seems to be ignoring you. You simply watch him play in silence. An hour passes. Grandfather Clark says, Ryan suddenly looks up from the 64. It's time, he says. Stop being weird. That's him, says Ryan, standing up. Should I go? I should go let him in. As he leaves in the den, you could follow or be part. Or But a part of you really feels like being scarce for a bit. I'm going to go with that. Or should I go run to the bat? Bathroom. Uh, let's... Closet? Front door. Okay. You crawl into the plain white box that is about the size of the linen closet and close behind you. From the front of the house, you can hear the front door slam open. After that, you hear... You don't hear anything except child. The ran... The rain. No. no not just the rain. But the voice in the back of your head, like, I am coming for you, child. I like, like something you can't even begin to describe. Though you lock the door behind you, you hear it open easily. Something walks in. Hold your breath. You're not sure how you know something is, our, is out there, but you don't exactly. Child. Hear it moving, but you know it's there. You know it's stopped. Poor, poor child. Right outside your hind spot. It opens the door, even though you immediately realize it doesn't have any hands. Oh, child. I am so hungry, child. You cannot run, child. Hello, child. No more worries, child. Hello, child. Cease. Screaming cease. I have no friends for you, child. Friends for you. In the dark. Oh. Let's... You will play forever. In the dark. Hello, child. What? Is that it? Uh... Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so that's it, I am assuming. Well, everyone, that is the uncle who works for Nintendo. The way you guys can play this, you literally just need to look it up and it takes you to a website. And you guys can play this for yourself if you guys want to see if there's any extra secrets or anything like that. I don't know if there is, but that's creepy. I don't know what the hell that was, but that's creepy, all right. Anyways. I do want to say thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure you guys are on the lookout for Dark Wolf. It will be coming soon. Also, tomorrow, uh, Mario Kart 8 live stream. So be sure to look out for those two things very soon. Um, mainly Mario Kart 8 live stream. But yeah, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you guys are new, please consider joining the Nickrick family for almost daily gaming content. I love you guys all, and I'll see you in the next video. Roll the credits.